Hey guys, Ole Anderson from the Berkshire, Massachusetts Treasure Hunter, and welcome to my channel. It's Friday, January 6th. It's actually my birthday. Um, I'm pretty much out of content on my for my channel on on my YouTube channel. I have one or two more videos, maybe one or two. Uh, that I'll be posting and then I'm out and I'm frozen out here in uh, we are frozen out here in Massachusetts in the Berkshires pretty much so who knows when we can get out metal detecting again so I thought I would make a video about the Housatonic River and what you can find in the Housatonic River um, I'll call it uh, my 20 well, not 20 best finds, but 20, 20 things you can find in the Housatonic River. Why don't we go with that? Uh, this picture here, I'm on my computer right now. This picture here is from uh, Sheffield, Mass. Uh, pretty close to me. It's the covered bridge in Sheffield. And right there, right there, is the UFO Memorial. Apparently somebody got abducted by a UFO in the, what, 50s or 60s, something like that. So, uh, so this is the Housatonic River. I will lay in some pictures as we go along. I just want to start out the video by this. Um, the Housatonic River is, hold on, I'll show you, hold on a second. So this is a map of the Housatonic River, this line here that's the stretch of the uh, Housatonic River and it starts up here in Western Mass in Pittsfield and it runs for 149 150 miles down to the Long Island Sound uh, it passes through numerous old towns mill towns there was textile mills iron mills you name it it was all there along the river uh, at one point in Pittsfield alone, the, there was 30 dams to dam up the water for the industry. Uh, so they used it for electricity, they used it for mills, iron ore mills. All of it was pretty much at this river. Uh, it also has a, not a bad side. Well, it's getting better, but it was also a very polluted river caused by GE in Pittsfield. They uh, released a lot of the cooling water for the generators. They made generators and the oil and cooling water, I guess from making them, they released in the Housatonic River. So it's full of PCB or was full of PCB. Um, there's a lot of trash in this river because I think it was what 1976 or 1972 America did the Water Act where you couldn't pollute rivers before then you could pretty much do whatever you wanted and that shows up in the rivers so a lot of trash tires shopping carts cars you name it it's in there uh, but one man's trash is another man's treasure, and there is a lot of treasure in this river. Oh, speaking about pollution, as you can see, you cannot eat anything out of the river, uh, contaminated with PCBs. So, to catch and release is very good fishing in this river. They have a whole stretch, or a numerous stretch, with a... Uh, for fly fishing and it's very good fishing there's some monster carps in there there's pikes there's you name it carps uh, bass it's all in there um, like I said the river is getting cleaner you can actually swim in it now and see how it says you cannot eat now it says you can eat one a year I haven't chosen a fish yet though to eat uh, I probably wouldn't eat out of it yet so the river's getting cleaner nature is kind of healing itself with some help from 
from humans, I guess, uh, up near Pittsfield. For a long, long stretch, they have dug out the river and cleaned it up. I think they took out eight feet of riverbed, pretty much, to get rid of the PCBs. And it's in a pond right now up there, mostly of it. Down here, I'm down in South County, it's called. Uh, it's more clean. You can actually swim in it now, so I don't swim, but I do walk in it. But we'll get to that later. So like I said, it's a very beautiful river. Uh, this, I think, is the mill buildings in Lee. There's a ton of these mills all the way. Uh, there's old iron ore mills that made iron ore. Uh, there's foundations everywhere. There's everything. So, And a lot of dams are still there and a lot of broken down dams so but yeah I think this is a mill in Lee I'm in Housatonic town a small town and we got a mill building two textile mill right by the river and further down towards Great Barrington there's mills too so yeah there's plenty of it so a lot of cover bridges too actually but like I said it's an absolutely beautiful river a lot of wildlife and very big for kayaking um, no swimming but kayaking boating fishing it's huge here so there's numerous kayak launches all the way so if you're into kayaking it's probably worth trying I did it with my daughter it was fun we did a three hour maybe four hour stretch um, but what I do in the river is hunting for antique things. What you would call trash or what they considered trash back in the days is now turned into treasure if you can find the right stuff. And in particular it's glass bottles, old antique bottles, stoneware, uh, whatever you can find in the river. Of course there's new bottles, new trash. Like I said, it goes anywhere, probably from the late 1700s up to 1972, 78, whenever they made the Water Act. And people still throw stuff in the river, of course. Uh, every summer I find garbage bags with stuff in it that I pull out and throw in the trash. Uh, what I try to do is take all plastic out of the river. I can't take glass and all that. It doesn't really pollute the river. I mean, it might not look good, but you don't see it if you don't specifically you look for it. And I know the local uh, Boy Scouts are cleaning up the river every year, and they take out numerous tires and shopping carts, you name it, they take it out. So huge thanks to them for cleaning up the river. I try, I try and take as much trash with me as I can. Uh, I just have a backpack so and I normally just do one trip I don't go back and then come out again the same day so what I do I walk in the river yeah walking uh, this is pretty much the only way you can find uh, the treasures the glass bottles and stuff well you can kayak but you'll definitely miss some unless you know the spots you're looking for uh, there's a few other people that does it There's me. There's one guy at work that taught me a lot and then there is uh, What's he called himself the spotted turtle treasure hunter and He does it a lot more than I do. He has a huge collection of bottles some beautiful bottles, so uh, The thing with the Housatonic River it varies every year how much you can get in it some years you don't get in it because it rains and it gets very deep and dangerous you gotta definitely have respect for this river um, but some years like the last two years we have had a long big drought and I could walk anywhere pretty much and I found a lot of stuff uh, three, years, three years ago I only got in the river once so and the season is very small you have a small window it takes quite a while before the river warms up you gotta be like 
probably I would say early June mid June and then you got until September pretty much and that's it so after all we are in the Berkshires in uh, in Massachusetts so you don't have a big window but you can find some awesome stuff and that's what I'm gonna show you today so we'll do 20 finds out of the Housatonic River there's a few finds from another river a little river uh, called well a little creek called Green River it runs into the Housatonic that has some stuff in it too pretty much I don't even think it matters where you live in America if you have a river that runs through an old town and you can get in it you'll find stuff or oh, believe me you'll find bottles you'll find a lot of stuff I found guns I found shotguns I found knives it's in there uh, so yeah if you live in a small uh, near a river small river that like not the Mississippi and something you won't be walking around that but a river where it runs to a creek where it runs to a town get out of it in, in the summer and you'll be amazed what you're finding you'll see a lot of trash you'll see a lot of weird stuff but I bet there's treasure in it so why don't we get to this 20 finds out of the Housatonic River so number 20 on the list and I'm not doing uh, it's just random order there's some better finds than other of course there's some very rare finds but we'll get through them so number 20 I chose this as number 20 is blue glass milk of magnesia bottles and bromo salsa there's an abundant number of those in the river in the Housatonic River uh, a lot of broken ones of course but I found a ton of them I almost find them every time I go out so uh, they're a very popular bottle because of its color a lot it's getting collectible uh, this is a machine made a screw top I have not found any cork top yet actually but I know they do exist so this is probably from the 20s 30s maybe even 40s but yeah milk of magnesia is a newer variant uh, that would have had a paper label on it a big one but it had the cab on it still or the screw top so that was pretty cool and here's a smaller variant they come in different sizes too uh, but the, the embossment is beautiful in these bottles and this is a smaller size as you can see so yeah milk of magnesia blue bottles blue glass very popular and here is the bromo salsa this might be an older one because it's a cork top uh, the common screw top too so this could be 20s maybe 1920s or so I do not always know the age of my bottles some of them I do uh, I got a lot from the 1800s I got a few from the 1700s um, but most is around 1900 19 10 20 30s so yeah promo salsa blue glass number 20 very popular number 19 is also a blue bottle but it's a poison bottle uh, they're in the river um, they come in different colors different shapes some has a skull on them some just say poison some had a paper label to come in green amber color aqua color and this blue color Number 19 poison, very popular bottle, and there's some very rare ones. I have yet to find one with a skull on it, uh, but I'm sure I will someday. This is probably, uh, well, it's machine made, so it could be the 20s, 30s, 40s, who knows. But a uh, blue poison bottle, another popular bottle out of the Houstonic. Number 18 is toy guns. Uh, 
I found quite a few toy guns. Here's two of them. This one here gave me pretty much a heart attack. I thought it was real. When you look down the water and see this laying down on the bottom, your heart beats a few extra, or you, it skips a few beats because you're like, yeah, I found a gun. It's a toy gun, so that's one of them. Then we have the more rare one. This is a Flash Gordon Vicious gun. Uh, this is from the 30s, 40s, uh, plastic gun. But yeah, uh, I could see it was a toy or I didn't know. I knew it wasn't a real gun when I saw it. Um, but yeah, a Flash Gordon Wizard toy gun. Then toy. There's also a lot of other toys in the river. Uh, a lot of plastic toys. Not worth nothing. Uh, I take them out and throw them in the garbage. But yeah, toy guns. What did we get to number 18? I'll call it 18. It's knives. This is a German dagger. Corium pick it's called. It got a eagle talon that's holding the globe. This was made out of sol Solgen in Germany. It was uh, right around World War II or right after. It was a catalog knife. You could order and somebody, I guess, order one and somehow it ended up in the river. So that's not blood, by the way, that's rust stains. It, I got it completely clean and uh, it's starting to rust a little again. So yeah, German dagger. And then you find a lot of pocket knives. There's a lot of pocket knives in the river. There's also a lot of rusted knives you'll never get to function again, but this it's definitely my best one, German Dagger. Number 17, and that's a real deadly weapon, or part of a deadly weapon. That wasn't found in the Housatonic, it was found in the Green River. It is a bayonet from uh, Marsin Nagant. Very popular rifle here in the US at some point, as you can see, it's falling apart. So, but yeah, that is uh, it's real bayonet from a Mars in the Gant. We thought it might have been older, but we're pretty sure it's from a Mars in the Gant. If anybody knows and thinks it's not Civil War, I know that. I don't think so anyway. But yeah, a bayonet. Number 17 is these railroad spikes. They're everywhere. Uh, I have a couple of them I cleaned up. I used to collect them and send them to a guy that made knives out of them. So, yeah, you'll find these everywhere because the railroad goes right along the Housatonic pretty much all the way. So, number 17, railroad spikes. Number 16 and that's definitely trash. It's golf balls. There's golf balls everywhere. No matter where you go, there's golf balls. Uh, it just shows me one thing. We have a lot of bad golf players, I guess, in this area. But yeah, golf balls number 16. Uh, I wonder if you could actually collect them and clean them up and sell them again. There's a ton of them. But yeah, golf balls number 16 number 15 is milk glass there is white milk glass everywhere uh, pond cream especially a lot of it as you can see it says ponds this still had the jar and the content and it didn't smell so good uh, some of them are early this one no it's still uh, screw top. This one here is not uh, a cream jar. This is a lunch meat cheese, actually. Royal Luncheon Cheese. That was a cork top. This is an oldie. 
that's 1800 so yeah milk glass number 15 and there's a lot of it number 14 speaking about milk milk bottles they are pretty old some had a paper label on top I don't know if they had a cork top these are locals one quart liquor liquid Fitzpatrick Brothers Great Barrington Massachusetts one quart here's another small pure Isaiah milk uh, I don't know if this is Great Barrington it's Massachusetts anyway a quart uh, a pint I guess and then this one uh, day, diary a day day I can't even talk dairy something uh, of the Berkshires so yeah this is definitely a local bottle too so number 14 milk glass as you can see this has a big crack in it and I don't clean all my bottles that's one thing bottles out of the Housatonic is very dirty very hard to clean and I don't have a tumbler maybe someday but it's not worth the electricity if the bottle is not rare so so you gotta be careful with what you're doing so but yeah number 14 milk bottles number 13 is coke bottles and where you will find that the Housatonic is these Hubble skirt uh, I do not know I know in Pittfield Mass there was a brewery I mean uh, a coke coca-cola plant but I do not know when they started because I have never found or seen a straight-sided coke in the Housatonic River or any of the other creeks I go in uh, I just don't think they made it here so it's mostly these hopples good they have a nice color aqua blue green so I don't collect a lot of them but I have a few um, they're both local from Pittsfield but like I said I have never seen a straight-sided coke and I do not believe any of the other ones has ever found one I just don't think they made them around here what they did make what was very popular is the Mohawk beverage as you can see this one still has the label on it a little Indian Native American kit or girl I think not sure but Mohawk bottles uh, I do find a lot of those these with the labels was the newer ones and I have a few that's embossed that says Mohawk this was the choice over coca-cola for sodas I think uh, like I said I never found a straight side so this was number 13 coca-cola so what did we get to number 12 I might be adding a few more I think number 12 number 12 is liquor bottles and here we have uh, see it's hard to see where's my flashlight this is a mount, mount, I don't even know if you can read it, Mount Venan Pure Rye Whiskey, Volume 1, PT 90 ounces, Cook and Bernheimer Company, full 5 refilling, refilling of this bottle prohibited, Volume one pint 90 ounces so this is a Mount Venan that's what just George Washington's brewery was George Washington definitely loved his alcohol so this is a Mount Mount Mount, Mount Venan pure rye whiskey bottle corked up uh, I do not know how old this is uh, it's about a twenty thirty dollar bottle so but yeah Mount Venon then we got a 
Gotta zoom out a little on this one. This is a gin bottle. This is probably the later 1800s, 1870s, 1880s, uh, maybe 1890s even. Uh, this is a gin bottle, I'm pretty sure. Cork top. Uh, this was blown in a mold. I don't know if you can see how crude it is, the glass. It's kind of crazy. Let's see if we can see. I don't know if you can see it. It's almost see-through. Very crude bottle. So, yeah, this is a gin bottle. So you got the gin, you got the whiskey, and then, of course, beer. The amber beer. Uh, this was blown in my mold, I think. Because the seam don't go all the way up, corked up, not embossed. Uh, Anheimer Bush. So 1879, I think. Beer bottle. But unfortunately, it doesn't have any um, embossment in it. Not many of the beer bottles or the whiskey bottles do. So yeah, number 12, alcohol bottles. Number 11, stoneware. Uh, stoneware alcohol bottles, I guess. Well, I don't know, this is a ginger beer. Was ginger beer alcohol or was it soda? Uh, like root beer. Guess it was probably soda, like a drink for everybody. Uh, this is found in the Housatonic. No, well, there's a little marking here. I can't really see what it says. But yeah, they will hold. I find a lot of uh, broken ones. There's a ton of them. These two was whole. I found about four years ago. So I do not know what this little thing says. Yeah, I cannot. I cannot read this little stamp. It has to make us mark. So, but yeah, that's the ginger beer bottle. And staying with the, this is a water bottle out of the Housatonic, a German water bottle. So I guess fancy water maybe. I thought it was wine, but it is water. Comes from Germany. Uh, somebody could have brought them it has a stamp too I can't quite see what it says something's LTR and Sons but yeah a German water bottle a water jug I guess we should call it stoneware and then we got this one and that's almost one of my best finds an E. Jackson stoneware beer bottle. This is Civil War era. One of the first stoneware beers made in America, produced, mass produced. E. Jackson stoneware bottle. So this stoneware has been rolling around in the river since 1860s, whatever. It might have been right after the Civil War, but I'm pretty sure it was made before the Civil War. E. Jackson uh, beer, stoneware. That's one of my best finds. Not that it's super valuable, but it's very old, corked up. It has some good fatina from rolling around in the river for so many years. I'm surprised it survived. But yeah, E. Jackson Stoneware beer. Number nine. I think this is number nine. Hey, you will just get extra if I'm wrong with my numbers. Number nine is a beer, uh, whiskey jug. There is a lot of broken whiskey jugs in the river. Uh, this one I found last year. I was lucky that it was whole. It has one little tiny chip up there, but besides that, it's whole. Not a crack or nothing. Normally I'll find the handles with the top, all pieces. 
but that was a whiskey jug. I came, it was the bottom was sticking up and I was digging for quite a while and it finally came out and I couldn't believe it was whole. Another one and that's kind of a heartbreaker. Uh, I posted that on my Instagram the other day. Is this uh, Metropolitan Club Whiskey Blend uh, from Cincinnati, Ohio? This is a salesman, salesman sample. What they would do before they sold these big ones with filled, of course, they would give. When they came, they would give the store a sample of what they were doing, kind of like what you do with clothes and stuff, I guess, or what they did with clothes and that. They would give them a miniature whiskey jug. Unfortunately, as you can see, it's missing the handle and the spout. But I still kept it because I have hope that I will find a whole one. They are getting pretty expensive if you can find them whole. It's a miniature whiskey jug. So, yeah, number nine. Stoneware whiskey jug. Number eight, glass insulators. I see a lot of those in the river, a lot of broken ones. I don't really collect them. I only got these three, but I do know there's a huge follower following for for insulator, insular glass insulators, and they can be worth a lot of money. Uh, as you can see this one's still dirty, it's a little bit broken. Uh, this one is from Brookfield, New York. Uh, here's uh, another one from New York. I mean, in the Housatonic, I found them. But they have some nice colors. But like I said, I don't really collect them. But number eight, glass insulators. You can find them in the Housatonic. Number seven, mason jars. This one happens to be the oldest one I got. A very nice color too, and still had the lid on it. Uh, there was no content in it but mud. But yeah, still kind of unscrews. I don't want to move it too much so it breaks. This has a patent date of November 30th, 1858. Doesn't mean necessarily it's this old. But it's old. I would say it's from the 1800s. Uh, mason jar, one of the most popular uh, canning tools in America or in Europe for that matter. Uh, number eight, mason jar, 1858 patent date, out of the Housatonic. Number seven is ink jars. There's a variety of ink jars, broken ink jars. Um, I think this one is an ink jar. Sometimes they fool you and they can be shoe polished, but I'm pretty sure this is an ink jar. I know this one is. That's from a local school. Not very old. Uh, what's to say? I can see a date. I think. Uh, maybe not. It got a number in here, so. This is from a local school that's pretty close to the river and it has a ton of ink jars in them. These size and other sizes. I think this one too has a milk glass ink jar. This one is an older one. This is probably 1800 blown in the mold. Uh, this has a certain name I can Umbrella jar I guess. Umbrella ink jar I'm pretty sure. The oldest one I ever found was this one ink jar, uh, stoneware, a penny jar they were called, that was out of the little river, green river in a little town, uh, this, they're not that valuable, well, I don't know how valuable, I don't, I don't really look into value, valuables, what, what they're worth, I just like to collect some of it, uh, but this one is definitely old, that's from the 1800s, it could be older too, very crude, uh, penny jar ink and with those you didn't get them like that you got a bottle like this uh, ink bottle this is uh, ER Shaw 
company. Uh, Makersfield or something like that. But that's a ink bottle. So you would fill your, your ink jars. Later they would probably come in plastic. So this is pretty old. 1800s I would say. It had like a screw top you could put in. Probably a rubber. So late 1800s I would think. Uh, it doesn't have a stamp. Oh, it does have a stamp. But uh, again, it doesn't come with a date. So yeah, ink bottle. Ink jars. Another thing out of the Housatonic River is medicine bottles and extract bottles to cover the taste of the bad medicine, I guess. You got this one, it's embossed all the way around. It's Atwood's Joinders Bitters, formerly made by Moses Atwood. Uh, something own mass. So yeah, this is a uh, joinders bitter. A lot of it was quack, you know, probably didn't help. Uh, you got a uh, Lewis Crawford and Son, New York extract. This one here, I'm not so sure, it could be a perfume bottle, I think. Let's see what it says here. Uh, Larkin and Sons, Buffalo, New York. I'm not so sure what this one was. I looked it up once. Fuzz liquid uh, liquid fruit flavor. It's covered a bad taste of the medicine. Uh, Fuzz liquid fruit flavor. This one I've seen a lot of broken ones. I haven't found so many. This is a very common bottle. California Fix Serum Calific. <laughs> uh, all cork tops, most of them uh, machine made. This one is not. Uh, this one is. And then you got another one here Burnett's Standard Flavoring Extract. So Burnett's and Foss seems to be the variety there was. So number, was it seven? Seven. I think extract bottles and flavoring to cover the bad taste of medicine or medicine bottles. So again, I forgot the number, but I'll say number six uh, chemical bottles. There's an abundance of chemical bottles. This one is cit citrate, uh, mac magnesia, citrate magnesia. Uh, I don't know what it was used for. Citrate Magnesia It's from Chicago. Oh, Brooklyn, New York, Chicago. Oh, for sanitary reasons, this bottle is not Returnable. Oh, so you can return them. So I do not know what this was for. I think it says Nash Solution National But this is a Citrate Magnesia bottle. Pretty cool bottle. I don't think it's that old But it has a cool design Next one is a Parlor Pride stove. Uh, I think the stove cleaner, or maybe to color it, you know, the old stoves to black. I do not know if it's a cleaner or or a coloring thing. I can uh, oh, what's it say? I can't see it, but definitely uh, a camera chemistry bottle. This one happens to be from Boston. Then you got this one. Uh, I am not sure what this is. I could not find anything. It's from Portland, USA. Uh, still got the cork floating around in there. Uh, but it's a very cool design. I do not know if you can see it. Let's see. It has a very cool design. And then you got this, the Maltine Chemistry, New York. A lot of them come in amber. There's a lot of amber broken pieces, chemistry bottles. They were used for all kind of stuff. I also got a shoe 
shoemaker bottle. Uh, it probably had some kind of chemistry for when they were making shoes. Uh, there was dye, there was bluing for laundry. I mean, there was all kind of stuff. So, yeah, number six, chemistry bottles. Number five is this beautiful, I think it says JSP, but I could just say JP. No, there's definitely an S in there. So, or SP. It's, uh, I think it's a spice bottle, as far as I remember. They came in this green color, they came in a blue color, and I think in clear. Uh, very old and very crude made as you can see this is somewhere in the 1800s uh, blown in the mold it's a little bit crooked too you can see that's how they they didn't always come out perfect and you can see the seam is very standing right up uh, but yeah JP I guess it, I kind of see an S in there too but I guess JP or SP SP uh, spice bottle I would think it is I think it is I looked it up once that's out of the Housatonic River that's somewhere in the 1800s been rolling around for quite a while it has a little bit of a wear because it's been rolling around but you can see it got a lot of old bottles I mean uh, a, bottle. a lot of old bubbles there's some aids to this one SP sauce bottle I think that's what it is there you go number five number four not I was hunting this bottle for a very long time I knew it was in the river somewhere because I found a lot of broken ones was it last year or the year before I finally found the whole one so this is a card bottle it has a very special design as you can see it dents in here uh, there's a marble in there so you gotta drink off it in a certain way see there's like I don't know if you can see it but there's some dents in there so you gotta drink out of that way because if you drink out of this way it closes the the hole so yeah, this marble would be sitting up here and it came with a special tool to open it. You would push it down and the marble would be down there. So some of these, if you find these clear marbles, could be out of a card bottle. It's C-O-D-D. -D. Uh, they're still made. This one is probably from around 1900s, 1910. Uh, but they still make them today. The Japanese use it, the in India use it. Uh, it's pretty cool if you go into a Japanese specialty store and get a soda it has this marble and you've got to push it down so but yeah a card bottle uh, I do not think it has a date or maybe do 1882 maybe and you can hear the marble in there so yeah number was this for card bottle I was hunting this for a long, long time. Number three is the torpedo bottle. Yep, it's kind of shaped like a torpedo. They came come in a few different shapes, but they're all around, so they cannot stand up. They gotta lay down, and that was so, I'm pretty sure it's all sodas or carbonated stuff. So the cork had to be wet all the time, so they had to lay down. Um, that's why they're round the bottom. That was a design they had. This one is old. 1800s, blob top. Uh, no embossment, but a lot of bubbles. I do not think they had a paper label or nothing. And this one is probably one of my older bottles. Blob top, torpedo bottle very distinct design very cool bottle I was happy I found that and then this one here uh, this is from England or actually from Ireland I guess it says Belfast and Dublin 
uh, Cantrell and Kong Crane. So, yeah, soda bottle. Definitely blown in the mold with an applied top, maybe. Round in the bottom. See all the bubbles there? It's crazy. These are found in the Housatonic River, not far from each other. As you know, I can hear I don't give up my spots. Uh, like I said, I have one competition. Well, it's not really a competition. Uh, two of them, actually. One I work with, he taught me a lot of stuff about the Housatonic River. He kayaks a lot. And then the other guy that has a YouTube channel, you should try and look up the Spotted Turtle Treasure Hunter. He do a lot of bottles and a lot of dumps. He does mostly in glass. So look him up, the Spotted Turtle Treasure Hunter. So number, was this three? Uh, torpedo bottles. Old stuff, out of the Housatani. Number two. Artwork. Uh, there's schools along the river and they had ceramics and apparently they didn't like the stuff they made. This is my favorite, actually one of my favorite finds. This is my little mascot, my little river troll. Whoever made this did a good deal to get the hair and the ears and the eyes and the frowny, frowning face. He has been in the river for a long time. When I saw it, I was like, somebody's staring at me. Look at those ears. <laughs> so yeah, he's been sitting on my shelf ever since. I think I found him the first year, so it's five years ago or so. Uh, a ceramic uh, little head that I guess the kid that made it didn't like it through it in the river. And here's a vase. Uh, very crude, but kind of cool. Um, I do have uh, some scribbles in the bottom. I tried to figure out who made it, but uh, it's also painted uh, inside or glazed on the inside and then burned. So yeah, number two art stuff out of the Housatonic River. As you can see, it has some spoons and stuff. Uh, that I found metal detecting. We will probably, as you noticed, I didn't do a uh, best find of 2022. Uh, I thought I would do this one instead. I might be doing a best metal detecting finds too. 20 best things, I guess. Uh, so, number two artwork out of the Housatonic. Number one, and Probably my prized possession out of the Housatonic is this Hutchinson bottle. Uh, I've ever only found this. I found broken ones. I normally find the neck. Uh, as you can see, this one still got the stopper in it. It would go up and close. I don't know if I can get it to do it. But it would go up and close so that the stuff couldn't get out. This is a local one. Berkshire Brewery Associ Association, Pittsfield, Mass registered uh, what should I say here this bottle is not to be sold this is a very rare bottle it's smaller than the regular Hutkinson bottles you can find uh, this is because this is a test bottle this one never made it into production uh, there's only made a few of them uh, and I happened to find kind of the history about it. The engineer that designed this bottle lived here in my town or town over Great Barrington by the river and I guess when he moved or threw trash out this bottle ended up on the river bank. This was actually not in the river as you can see it's very clean uh, I just happened to walk in the river and it was sticking out of the bank like this. I did not know what it was. It was sticking out and I pulled it out and I couldn't believe it was a Hutchinson bottle. So this one never made it into production. Uh, it would have been a soda bottle I think. And uh, 
I do not know how many those made, but those not made many of them. Very rare bottle. Uh, I can say right now I got offered $600 for this bottle and it's not for sale. So this is probably my price possession of bottles. Uh, so we got to number one. Actually, I didn't want to show you guys this one. I just wanted to show you this beautiful color bottle. I'm pretty sure it's a beer. Could be an early ketchup, but I think it's a beer bottle. Uh, yeah, Ambrosius. So it's a beer bottle, but I just wanted to show you the color. Very pretty. Uh, so yeah, we got to number one. The Hutchinson bottle. I know there's another hus There's a lot of. I have not found one more than this one, but I know there's more than one Hutchinson bottle in the river. The spotted, the spotted treasure hunter, or the spotted turtle treasure hunter, has found quite a few. Uh, of course, there's a lot of outer states one too, uh, Hutchinson bottles, but it's rare to find. Um, find them here. So yeah, this is probably my priced, uh, my price possession. It's worth a lot of money. It's not for sale. I know we got to number one, but I want to show you a couple more bottles. Hold on. I guess we can call these number zero. Uh, like I said, I live in Housatonic Town, right next to Great Barrington, Mass. And I knew it had its own glassworks back in the days and I've been looking for bottles from the local glassworks and I have found a couple uh, unfortunately they got a little bit of dings in them one of these days I'll found some whole ones again the spotted turtle treasure hunter found some whole ones I know that um, so this is Great Barrington Bottling Works RT Prune Great Barrington Mass registered this bottle is not to be sold and here's another one it's been out in the sun it's turning purple and the same RT prune mass two different size bottles this one was a blob top this is a regular top so this one is old 1800s this one could be up in the 19 maybe 1900s as you can see it has a little bit different top than regular soda bottles. Uh, it probably had the, the thing with the cork that you click over. But this was definitely a blob top. So yeah, we call this number zero, the local Great Barrington glass bottles. So yeah, we made it to the 20, spot, 20 best finds. Well, not best finds, but 20 finds you can find out of the river. And I hope you enjoyed it. Maybe I'll make a video about 20 finds from metal detecting. Uh, like I said, I didn't make a 2022 best find. Uh, and I'm out of footage. So this one will come out. This is, you know, this, this is my birthday today, January 6th. Uh, I will... As soon as I get this video done, I will upload it. I have a few more videos I can send out, and then this one will come out. So, and then we'll maybe make uh, 20 finds of metal detecting. I hope you enjoy this kind of content. If you do, press subscribe and like. It really helps the channel. I'm hoping we're getting over 400, I mean 500 subscribers this year, 2023. Uh, I got some very promising permissions coming up. Just got to wait for the ground to thaw and the snow to be gone. I don't have any wood uh, permissions to go metal detect in the woods. Old cellar holes, so that's why I'm making this video. Uh, I might make a 20 best finds for metal detecting. So if you like this kind of content, press subscribe and like. And you all have a nice day. Bye.